Hey guys, welcome to another video and in this one, we're going to be answering a very, very important question. Should you be taking the GRE or GMAT for the spring or fall 2023 term? So if you're targeting a term that is almost a year away now, almost eight, nine months away, you know, even for spring, should you be taking the GRE right now? Because the applications are starting to open up in the next six months only. So it's very important for you to know the answer to this question. Now, let me tell you over here. I've seen this happen over the years, you know, 2019, 2020, 21. I've been watching this COVID thing happen, mostly from the 2020 terms, right? That's when the waivers started to come out and then a lot of universities started rolling out the waivers. So the short answer would generally be that it depends on your constraints and program requirements. What are your constraints? What kind of location-based constraints you have? What kind of you know universities do you wanna get into, et cetera, et cetera, right? And on top of that, your program requirements. If your program mandatorily requires a GMAT or, or a GRE, you can't do much about it, right? So that's basically what we are going to be evaluating over here. Before I get to the actual cases, we're gonna be taking three cases over here. I'm sure that most of you would be able to relate to at least one of these cases. But before that, I wanna tell you about a list we have compiled of over 50 universities right over here in the article section on viamgrad.com. You can see right here, universities waiving the GRE GMAT in USA due to COVID-19. Now this, this list over here, I think it has about 55 universities, 55 good universities that have waived off the GRE and the GMAT for the most part, okay? And by the way, we actually also have another one over here. Now this is actually even better. Universities waiving both the GRE and the TOEFL. You can actually take a look at this one as well, right? There's a couple of universities only over here, but again, these are waiving off both the English language program and the standardized test requirement. So, you know, you can really refer to these and you can understand, okay, so many of these universities are options that I can apply to without actually spending three, four months of my time and money and, you know, sleepless nights and studying all along in groups alone and all of that and taking mock tests and then actually spending money on the test, preparation material, etc., etc. So should I actually be taking the GRE? Now, I'm going to be giving you the answer over here in the next segment. We're taking up the case number one, and this is the only case where you seem to be applying to a program which has plenty of options and you have a great profile. What I mean by a great profile is something like an 8.5 plus GPA out of 10 or 85%, you know, on your academics or more, right? And you have, let's say, you know, a program choice that is very, very common program, program like computer science, program that is in the STEM field, right? Like data science, like mechanical engineering all these programs are really really common and almost every university offering an engineering program is going to be offering these programs right so when you're targeting such universities right where you really don't care about the ranking of the university or you really don't care about the exact brand name of the university and you're flexible in your approach okay i can apply to almost okay if not rank 21 i'll go for rank 25 that's fine i don't care rank 25 is waving off the gre i'll go over there or rank 23 is waving off the gmat i'll go over there i can't i i, I don't really have a personal belonging that i feel towards rank 21 if you are like that and you have a great profile great program that you're going for again a lot of universities are offering it in that case you can actually skip the gre and this is the only case where i'll recommend you to skip the gre by the way Right? When I say GRE, of course, I mean GRE or GMAT, depending on your program requirements. But again, you can skip it if your profile is amazing and if you're very, very flexible about the university that you go to. Now, coming on to case number two, this is where most of you guys will fall into, okay? And that is when you're applying to options which are very, very limited, okay? For some reason, I'll talk about those, why they're limited. Even though your profile is decent, okay? It's somewhere around seven, eight GPA or more, maybe, you know, 70%, 75% or more, you're, you're scoring. Decent enough profile, right? Decent enough profile, no backlogs, nothing like that going on. But your options are limited. And let me tell you why they may be limited. There may be some reasons, right? So the first is, of course, location constraints, right? You wanna go to a specific location, right? Hey, I wanna go to, California universities only. I want to be in California. I want to be in New York. I have this requirement, you know, my family's over there. I have friends over there. I only want to go to the, these two or three places, No, more, nothing else. What does that do? That limits the universities. Number two, of course, is specific university constraints. Oh, I only want to go to Purdue. I only want to go to Purdue, Purdue or Georgia Tech. These are the only two universities for me. I, I don't even think I want to apply to anything else. If Georgia Tech is not waving off the GRE or GMAT, you got to take it. The third part, three years bachelor's degrees right, 15 years of education, or you might say, or three-year bachelor degrees, right, you have not done a four-year bachelor degree, and that's something that you want to go ahead and directly apply with. You do not want to do a one-year PG diploma or anything. You want to just go ahead and apply right now. You don't want to waste one year of your time, right? 
So in that case also, there's very limited options for you. If you are actually a candidate with a three-year bachelor's degree, you're actually limiting your options already. On top of that, finding universities that are waving off the GRE and GMAT, it's gonna leave you with a very narrow range of universities. You don't want to do that. Point number four is that you're applying to an uncommon program. Your program essentially is, let's say, logistics and supply chain management. A few universities are offering it, not every university is offering it, and even in that, you need you know, a specialization in XYZ. It's gonna be very, very hard for you to find more than three, four universities with that specialization in XYZ when you're applying to STM programs. And maybe you just want them to be in a five, 10 locations only, right? All of those things can really pile up and it can become very, very hectic for you to find such universities. In that case, please consider taking the GRE or GMAT. And finally, of course, there are certain programs like you know MBA degrees that certainly do not want to wave off the GRE or GMAT for you. In most countries, you would find that GMAT still is not easily waived when you're applying to such programs or you know there are some programs such as the PhD in XYZ or PhD in ABC whatever you're going for right and in that in that program let's say almost 90% of the universities demand for the GRE but what are you going to do you're going to be left with very few options don't put yourself in that situation that tomorrow you don't have the amount of time to even prepare for the test right because this thing takes time this, take, this thing takes effort it takes money and all of that are and these are things that you cannot really take lightly you know it has to be done and it's a big decision you cannot simply you know go about making it on the go you really have to think hard about this so in all of these cases where you know your program may be you know limiting you or basically you know you have a decent profile but you still want to apply to universities and you really don't want to limit your options or you have some other other constraints always 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 be prepared and take these tests this is my personal recommendation to you i am telling you this not because i want you to waste your time on these tests but because I, I know the scenario that you guys end up into at the last moment, I know that people come to me and they tell me, yes, I want to apply to this university really hard, but I just simply cannot. And they're not waving it off for me or, you know, I have these constraints. They, they really don't even have four or five universities in the shortlist because of their constraints. And at the end of the day, if, you know, what happens is either they're applying to two good universities for their profile or two bad universities, which generally does not end up in a happy situation. They end up either getting all rejects or all admits and they're just not happy with e even a single admit, right? So all of these things can happen all the time. It's a big decision. This is really where it starts to matter. You have to really make it for yourself. Point number three, if you have a poor profile, hands down, take the GRE. <laughs> I just, I just kind of, anyway. So I'll just fix that. So yeah, take the GRE if you have a poor profile, right? Don't overthink it. It is required. It is mandatory for you. Don't let anyone tell you that, hey, so many universities are waving off the GRE, man. What are you doing? Why are you taking the test? All of these universities already waved it off. You're stupid. Let them know that, all right, I wanna be stupid. I wanna take the test. That's fine. It's my decision, right? Take the test. Trust me, you're gonna be better off. You don't really have to think about it. I've given you the answer. If you have a poor profile, backlogs, bad percentage, bad GPA, you know, uh, zero research papers with backlogs. Worst thing you can do is not take the test at that point of time, right? So I've given you the answer. Hopefully you should be able to go ahead and make a decision for yourself. I hope that you fall into one of these three cases. By the way, did you know that there's a lot more content like this that I put out on a daily basis on my Instagram page? So be sure to follow me over there and subscribe to the channel right here to motivate me to make such videos for you in the future. Of course, if you let me know in the comments your personal queries, I'd love to answer them through a video itself. I do not like to you know, go by answering a single question. I like to make videos on those. So you can always post comments down below. I'm reading every single one of them. And as soon as I get the time, I'll be making a video to answer your queries as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and take care.